Ooh, it's finally time for a masks tutorial. I'm so excited about this. Masks are something that I didn't know about for the longest time and I was using Photoshop for so long and wasn't using masks and then once I finally learned it just changed my life and made everything so much easier. So I'm really honored to be teaching you guys about masks. Okay, so the wonderful thing about masks in Photoshop is uh, they allow you to not uh, ruin your work. So um, anything you apply a mask to, you can undo at any time. So um, they're a really non-destructive way to work in Photoshop. Um, and that's really great to be non-destructive, right? Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use them. Let's get started. All right, let's first start off by copying this background layer again. We're still using the photo of my apartment. I'm so sorry if you're tired of looking at it. Let's copy it. Okay, so we have our copied layer here. And let's uh, do what we call a selection in Photoshop using a path. So remember those marching ants from the first class, if you were in the first class. Um, I call them marching ants because why not? They're, it's a dotted line that's moving. Um, okay, so let's use this marquee tool. Uh, let's make a circle, why not? So I'm going to hold down shift to make a perfect circle. Okay. Now I'm going to let go. And these are what I call the marching ants. Um, we have a line of a path that is selected. And so whenever something selected or whenever something has the marching ants, it's called a selection and um, it is a path. So a path, you can see over here, we have a paths window, and that's where we have paths and where we can make paths. And once we move on to the pen tool, I will show you how to make one with yourself. But for now, we already have this pre-made, ready-to-go path um, with our um, elliptical marquee tool that we used. So it's not a shape, exactly, because it's not using the shape tool, but it's just a little selection that we have on top, and we haven't done anything with it yet. Okay, so we just have the path uh, created on top of our layer here. So it's not in its own layer, it's literally on this layer that we have. And so the mask button, you'll see, is right down here. I think it looks like a little camera. It's a little rectangle, it has a circle inside of it, and it is the layer mask. So just watch what happens when I click on this. Oh, it looks like nothing happened, right? That's okay. So what you're seeing is actually the image below. So what I'm going to do to just show you what's happening is in between these two image layers, I'm going to create just a white fill layer. Do you remember how to do that? It's you click on the black and white cookie and then you go up to solid color, select that and pick white. Oh, okay. So now you can see what we did. So on this layer up here, we have a circle cut out of what we made. And do you remember a long time ago, I was showing you guys in the first class how we cut out a circle from Kevin and Yoko's photo. Um, I just made a little selection and then copied it and pasted it to a new layer. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that the other way. So here we go. I'm gonna copy this layer here, bring it up above the white fill layer. I hid my background uh, layer with the mask. I'm gonna title that masked layer. And then this one is unmasked layer. Okay, so the masked layer is hidden and we have our unmasked layer showing. Okay, so I'm going to take another circle. I can't guarantee that it will be the exact same as the one before. Uh, so here's my new circle. I have it selected on my image. So here's what I was doing before I knew about masks. I would take it, I would go Command C to copy and then Command V, which pastes the circle in a new layer. Okay, so what happened was I would then say, okay, let me just completely delete the one underneath. And now I have this layer with a circle in it. It's still the same. It has a circle with Santa in it, just as I wanted. But with the mask layer, remember we have the same circle with Santa in it. But the nice thing about the mask, you can see it over here on the right side, um, the black and white little graphic here. If I go onto the mask, I could just delete, I could drag the mask and throw it in the trash can it says, do you want to apply the mask before removing? I don't want to because I'm deleting it. And look, I have my image back. So it's completely non-degrading and it's non-destructive. So I can bring my image back at any time. Whereas my old method, I usually deleted the image. So if I wanted to bring my image back, I couldn't. So that's the lovely thing about masks is that um, it's completely non-ruining. 
Okay, so another wonderful thing about masks that you're going to like is let's say we want to remove certain things from an image. Um, I'm going to do this kind of a sloppy way for interest of time, um, but as we move on, I'll show you better methods. So let's say I want to uh, remove some of this image. So I will apply the mask first without doing anything. So let's see, we have masked layer. I'm going to click on that mask button down here, that little camera. Okay, so there's a mask. You can see how linked to my photo is this little white box. That's our mask. So I want to make sure that the actual mask itself is selected by clicking on it. Okay, so now I'm going to bring up my paintbrush tool. Okay, so the way masks work is uh, whenever you paint black on the mask, it masks it out. So it's going to mask out that layer, which means that it's basically erasing the layer without actually erasing it, which is really cool. So it's just going to make anything that I paint black on isn't going to show. And anything that gets painted white on will show. So by default, it's all white, as you can see. So now I'm going to paint some black on it. In order to bring up black, I like to do this little color swappy arrow thing down here. Uh, to bring back to the black to the foreground. Uh, by default, it had white on the foreground, so I'm just going to swap them. So black is on the foreground. And I have my paintbrush tool selected, see brush tool. And now I'm just going to, by default, it looks like it's really tiny. So in order to make my brush size larger, I can do two things. I can go up here into my brush options where it says 13. That is the size of my brush. So I can bring it up to larger, even larger. So you can see on my canvas, uh, you can see that my brush is much larger now. It's 271 pixels, which is what I moved it to. Okay, the other way to resize your brush is by using the um, parentheses and clicking them back and forth. So the left parenthesis is making it smaller, the right parenthesis is making it larger. Okay, so I made it real big now. And so look what happens when I paint black onto my mask it's actually getting rid of the stuff on the photo that I'm painting. So obviously this looks bad and you can find uses for it wherever you want. Um, in this use, it doesn't look very good, but I'm just giving you an example. So with our paintbrush, see how it's kind of blurry around the edge? I don't think I really like that. So I'm gonna do Command Z to go back in time and revert it back to the way it looked before. So I don't want it to look blurry around the edges. So I'll go back into my brush and do hardness, it's at 0%, which means it's going to be really fuzzy. It's not going to be hard. So I want to bring that up to 100% to make it hard. And then make sure I'm on my mask layer. And then I'll try it again. And look, now it's nice and it's not fuzzy at all. And I can just paint right on there. So here's where masks get amazing. So now I want to bring back some of the photo to show in here. I'll switch this back to white. And then I can paint and my image will come right on back. Pretty darn cool, huh? And at any time, if I wanted to delete the mask, I could do that. I just throw it away like I did before, and then I'll have my image back. So this is really nice, again, because it doesn't disrupt my image. I can just get rid of this at any time and bring my image back to the way it was, or I can just make it all white again and paint white all over it so that the whole image is showing. Pretty darn cool. So if I wanted a circle in the middle, for instance, that was out of the image, I could draw my circle again. And then I could, since it's selected, I have this perfect, cir perfect circle selected, I can bring up my paintbrush by pressing B for boy. That's the shortcut key for bringing up your brush. Or, and then I can go over here and select a black as the foreground color and I can just paint inside and then it's erasing my image right in the circle. And again, I mentioned this in the last class, but whenever I want this marching ant line to go away, I just do Command D for dog and it's gone. It's pretty neat, right? So, okay, so now I have this layer which I can move around. There's this big white obnoxious circle in the middle. Say I don't want that anymore, what would I do? Again, we would do one of two things. We could either drag this down to the trash can and throw it away or we can go back to our brush. I'm going to press B again for boy. Brings up our brush tool. And then I can paint. I switch this back to white and get rid of it by just painting over. That is how awesome the mask is. Okay, so let's practice a method of when we'd want to apply the same mask to multiple things. 
Okay, so for instance, if I had another image, let's find another image to put on my canvas. So I'm going to go find and then place embedded because I'm going to embed a new image into my Photoshop document. And I have another image on my desktop, so I'm going to place this one in there. Oh, it's another image of my apartment. Yay. Okay, so let's hide this new image. I'm going to title it new image. I'm going to hide it. Now let's go back to our masked layer. So, okay. So say I want a random shape that I'm drawing selected and masked out. Okay. Remember that tool I showed you before? It is called the lasso tool. So it's the one where I can make that marching ant line of any shape that I draw myself. So say I want this weird squiggly shape going around some items in my apartment. Perfect. Just like that. Okay, so there's my random, very strange squiggly shape. Okay, so I go over to my mask, make sure my mask is selected, and I'm going to make sure black is selected. Then I'm gonna select my brush. Now I can paint in here to get rid of that area, as we did in the previous exercise. You're all familiar with this, nothing new. Okay, so my marching ant line is still there, so what do I do now? I press Command D for dog, and there. So, I mean, this ugly shape isn't really pleasing to the eye, but it works for purpose of this class. So now, say I have this new image here, and I want to apply that same mask to my new image. It's easy, I just copy it on over. Um, okay, so what I do here is I go over here to my masked layer and I go over the mask and I press Alt or Option, same button on Mac keyboards, and I drag and drop it onto my new image. And look, the mask is now applied to my new image. So I can look at both of them and it's there on both. And remember that it's not actually white on the layer, it's actually just nothing on the layer. So if I hide this color fill white layer, you can see that this new image is now on top of the background and you can see through the new image onto the background layer. So um, it's not actually white. It was just looking like it was white because of this white color fill. So if I change this to, you know, uh, green, it would be green and so on. The last thing that I love about masks, I will show you now. So, okay. Let me just show this color fill layer and nothing else. And let's create a brand new shape. So I'm gonna create a new layer, name it new shape. And let's just make a triangle. Let's go triangle. Okay, so I'm doing the polygon tool. Change the size to three sides up there in my options. Hold down shift to make a perfect triangle. And now we have a triangle, it's black for now. Uh, that doesn't really matter, so it's okay. Um, and then let's show this photo layer and let's just delete this mask altogether. Let's just start fresh and drag this mask down to the trash can. It says, do you want uh, to apply the mask layer before removing? I do not. I don't want that mask to be around. I want it to go away. Okay, so we have our uh, Santa waving, hi Santa, uh, at us above our triangle layer. Okay, so the way I used to do this before masks is I would want my uh, triangle to cut out of my shape. Now, I would actually just go and make sure that the, ma the Santa layer is on top of the triangle, hover my mouse in between the two layers, and then press Alt or Option until that little square with arrow shows up and click in between, which is really great looking because now I have this layer which I can move around like if I have the layer, the photo layer selected, I can move it around on top of the triangle, which is nice because then I can center Santa perfectly to where he's waving at us all inside of his little triangle house. Or there's another way to do this with masks. So if I don't want to do it that way, which I wouldn't recommend because it, it's just adding two layers rather than one. So our mask layer is much better. So here's what I do. I go to the triangle layer and I select it and then right on top of the triangle the left hand side of the layer itself you hover your mouse over it and then press command to where that little dotted line square appears and click on it now while you're pressing command and now you get the marching ants on top of the triangle which is great perfect so I have marching ants now I go and click on my mask 
uh, my masked layer is what it's called. It's the Santa layer. I have it selected and now I click on the mask icon down here to add the mask. So now, look, I have a triangle Santa without the shape. So the shape I can completely delete. I don't need that anymore. I just need this one layer. So then the thing that's kind of a mummer, at least I thought at first, was that I can't move Santa around anymore and center him. Um, but that's actually not true. I can do that. So do you see how there's a link icon in between Santa and the mask? If I unselect the link, if I click on it to make it go away, I can now move Santa around. It's perfect. So now I move him around to wherever I want. Maybe I don't want him in there at all. So now I can just press the link again, click in between to make the link back, and now it's a whole thing. Again, if I didn't want this triangle anymore and I wanted it to go away, I could just delete the mask, and now I have my I would have my image back. Masks are so great. I'm so glad that I got to teach you masks. I hope you love them. They are so amazing. Let's move on to the next lesson.